I don't own either of these devices, but these are the most notable differences I noticed between the EcoFlow Delta Pro and the Blue Eddy AC300 Max. Stay tuned. What up? I'm I from Ask I Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. Ain't no need to complicate it. I was watching Will Prowse's video. He did a review or an overview of the EcoFlow Delta Pro. I enjoyed that video thoroughly. So there's a couple differences that I wanted to point out in this video, so let's get right into it. So the first difference between both of them is the difference in solar charging, right? They're actually very similar <laughs> in the solar charging, except Bluetti doubled up on their MPPTs. According to Hobotech, the AC300 Max has two MPP3 charge controllers. So a single charge controller says that it can take in about 1200 watts. The EcoFlow has the same 1200 watts of power that it can take in, but because the Bluetti doubled up on them, you can get in up to 2.4 or 2400 kilowatts, kilowatts, 200, <laughs> 2400 watts of power into that device, which is pretty, I mean, it's double, right? So you need to be mindful of that. That device can get in more power through solar than the EcoFlow River Delta Max Pro or whatever it's called, the Pro. As far as I know, they're pretty comparable in the voltage range and somewhat similar in the amp range as well. I think one might take in 12 amps and the other one takes in 15 amps. I'll put a little thing down at the bottom to let you know the difference, but they're pretty much the same. The next one is the external batteries, right? The external battery on the EcoFlow is pretty much useless without the device itself. So if something happens to your device, say you have to return it, say whatever, you got those two big old batteries or however many you have, one or two. As far as I could tell from the videos and what they noted, I don't know if things has changed, but they have no ports on them except for the ability to connect it to the EcoFlow Delta Pro. You compare that to the Blue Eddy, that device can not only be charged on its own, but it has USB-C ports. It has a, well, it has one USB-C port. It has a cigarette lighter port. It has USB-A ports. It's just a better device to even have on its own. You think about the ultimate flexibility you achieve by having something in your house. If y'all have been watching this channel for any amount of time, you may know that I'm a fan of multiple power stations versus one, but in that situation, even if you bought just the AC300 Max or the AC200 or whatever it is, even if you bought the AC300 or the AC200 Max and you buy those extra batteries, those extra batteries can be taken from that system, used other places in your house. You can even buy your own inverter, plug the inverter into the 12 volt port of those external batteries, and then you have a whole power station all over again. It can be charged from solar and it can provide AC power and DC power. Now, I will note that the EcoFlow does have the two 100 watt USB-C ports on the device itself. The AC300 only has one, but the AC300 has one on it, but you know the AC300 has to be purchased. The AC300 is the device and the battery. You, you can't do them separate. You have to buy one device and one battery together. That's what the AC300 is. But the battery that you attach to it has a USB-C outlet on it as well. So you have two ports, but they're just two ports kind of divided. So, you know, you take that into consideration. The other thing that I found incredibly interesting is the UPS functionality and the differences between them. I don't mean to be technical, but it's just something that I noticed. Hobotech was saying that, and I have to keep quoting these guys because I don't have these devices, right? <laughs> Send me the devices, y'all, and I'll check them out. Hobotech mentioned that the Delta, what it does is, it will, for its UPS, which is real pass-through charging, I know we call the other thing pass-through charging, but it really passes through the charge from the wall to the AC outlets, right when you're charging it from the wall. The Pro limits how much power you can have through that device, that pass-through, to what can come out of the wall outlet, which is interesting, right? Because he was saying that you can't get up to the full capacity of those AC outlets on the Delta Pro because it's simply bypassing all of that. So it won't overload your wall circuit. If your wall circuit is at 15 amps or if it's at 20 amps times 120 volts, which is whatever it is, I'm not going to math right now. <laughs> I don't want to. That's the maximum you can get out of those ports. You compare that to the Bluetti. Now, I don't know which Bluetti he meant he was talking about because he mentioned the EP500, 
but I don't know if the AC 300 works in the same way, but he talked about the fact that theirs will supplement the power. So if you try to pull 2000 Watts out of that, or let's just say amps, you try to pull 20 amps out of that wall outlet and you go above that, it will start to pull from the battery and figure out how to meet that need. Now you can't go above what the device is capable of, but on the Delta Pro, you can't go above what the outlet is capable of. Here's the implication of that for me, being a person who doesn't necessarily want to cycle my battery in order to accommodate pass-through charging. I like the fact that the Delta Pro only gives you what you can get out of your outlet because that's all I want. I wanna take the battery out of the equation if I'm doing that, right? I talked about these tips and tricks in my EcoFlow video. It was a live video, y'all can check that out. I basically use my EcoFlow River to pass through power to my modem, to maintain my internet, it should I get low on power from the battery itself. So what I'll do is I'll minimize how much the charge is, right? And then I'll allow it to just pass through just enough and then it's done. The battery's not being used, the battery's not being taxed. So I actually like that. That what, <laughs> what some consider a limitation is a pro for me. I do like the fact that the Blue Eddy does compensate because then if you need that power and it can provide that power, then it'll step up and, you know, it'll supplement it. Something to be mindful of. Here's a little bonus thing that I heard that not many people talk about. Hobotech, when he was doing his video, he mentioned that the, a the AC300 has a uh, what's called a PV priority. That's a feature that I want to see on power stations, which is to say, if solar is coming into this device, prioritize using the solar. I would even love to see solar be able to function in a pass-through capacity, right? And I feel like I could even be smart about it. Y'all could say, well, as long as you are providing double the solar input, then provide that power as a pass-through. I mean, you, you have to use something to go from DC to AC in a smart way to bypass the battery. So I don't know what kind of buck or boost inverter you would use, but I just think that that's really smart. I just wanted to bypass the battery. I don't even mind the loss from the AC inverter of going from solar to AC because you know there has to be some loss there. I feel like y'all just figure it out. The AC 300 has that mode. I don't know what that mode does but I'm kind of intrigued by that. If any of you guys own the AC300, can you please tell me about that and how that works? Possibly even do a video on it or something. I need to know because that's pretty important for me. I don't like AC pass-through. I wanna prioritize solar input. I hate charging my power stations from the wall. So I think that that's pretty dope. It has me kind of intrigued by that AC200 Max and the AC300. I wonder if they both have the PV priority or if it's just the AC300. That was my little bonus tidbit. I'm gonna leave it there. It is I've holla.